Daughters are the best. Bat tchila siman yafel lebanim. That's the comment you always hear people say when, when a, a couple are having daughters one after the other. People say, don't worry, bat chila siman yafel lebanim. They console them, so to say. Don't worry, as the Gemara says. And we have it in our Gemara today. Starting off with the daughter is a good sign for, for sons. The Gemara is based on the Mishnah we learned yesterday, that a man says, if a man says, if I have a son, I will give him a hundred. If I have a daughter, I'll give her two hundred. Does that imply that a man prefers to have a daughter than to have a son? It's interesting how from a passing statement of the Mishnah, the Gemara tries to deduce something that is so so fundamental. And the Gemara says, surely that can't be. And then the Gemara says, we're talking there about Linyan Yerusha Ben Adifle. As far as legacy is concerned, it's better to have a son who can take over the business, can take over the estate and run it, and he keeps the name of the family. That's better. But Linyan Harvacha. But when it comes to giving money to your children, Bito Adifale, his daughter comes first. He rather gives to his daughter. Here we're not talking about whether daughters are better or sons are better. We're talking about is it better to start with a boy or to start with a girl? That's the origin of that comment. It's Rav Chista's statement that to start with a girl is a good sign for the boys. Why? Some say it's because the girls help in, up in bringing up the son. And, they, and they're gentle and they're soft and they, they teach the son how to be a man. She, he's not as wild if he has older sisters. And some say it's because of ayin haro. Uh, two different ways of understanding that. The Rabbeinu Gershom who says that if a man has a lot of sons to start with, people talk about it. They, there's a jealousy. And jealousy, as we've had before, creates a negative energy around people. And that's called ayin hara. And uh, if, if a man has a whole lot of sons... People talk about it with a, with a bit of envy, and that's not something that you want. The Mashal learns it a little differently and says, if, you've got a, if you start with sons, you've got a Bechor. If you've got a Bechor, he's going to be treated as a favorite in certain respects, particularly when it comes to inheritance, and that causes the other sons to be jealous and envious. Either way, it's around envy. Iron horror is usually about a negative energy that attaches to somebody caused by envy. And that's why we play down, we, we're not ostentatious, because when there's ostentation, there's envy and there's ayin hara. I remember years and years ago, I started being worried and talking about the fact that Jews, in, and particularly from Jews in certain parts of the world, were being ridiculously ostentatious about their wealth. The Rebbe Shalom gave the generation an unbelievable, unbelievable bracha. People who came out of the concentration camps came to the United States, to England, to Europe, and became superbly wealthy in a short period of time. And some were very discreet about it. And, and in some areas, and certainly today you see that even in some of the Froome areas of New York, you see unbelievable ostentation. And I was very concerned that that would lead to, uh, ultimately, to anti-Semitism, which we see today. I don't say that's, that's the only reason for it. But it doesn't, ostentation doesn't do any good for anybody. We play down the externalities, not only in material sense, in our Lithuanian tradition, as you know, is to play down the externalities of our frumkite as well, not to display how frum you are, not to display how, how wealthy you are, not to display how bright you are, to be able to just to, to manage it in such a way that it doesn't arouse jealousy. Sometimes you can't help it, and that's why we say in, in our tefillah, Shiloh Ya'ale Kinat Adam Alai, we daven to Hashem that people shouldn't be jealous of me because part of it we can't control. That's other people are jealous, what can you do about it? But when it comes to Ayin Hora, we certainly can diminish ostentation so that there's less opportunity for, uh, for Ayin Hara to take hold. That's the pshat of, of, of the Gemara, but there are two pieces of a drush. It's important to understand the pshat and everything you start with the pshat. What is the simple meaning? What is the Gemara saying? What is the simple meaning? But it is sometimes very beautiful to be able to align that pshat, that straightforward understanding of the text with some of the deeper meanings in, in Drush, in Musa, in Hashkafa, and even in, in Kabbalah. And there are two pieces that we'll, we'll learn. I'm not sure if we'll get to the second one. We'll try. The one is from, uh, from the Bob of the Rebbe. And, and he says something which, which leads to such an important principle in understanding genders. We started talking about yesterday, yesterday about how many genders are there. We talked about the different genders. Today we go further in the relationship between male and female, not just male and female people, but male, male and female energies. 
So the Bobby Vereba writes, this is back in 20, 20 years ago, he writes in the name of his father. His father was not the previous Bobby Vereba, his father-in-law was the previous Bobby Vereba, his father was another, another Rebbe. And he writes in the name of his father, based on the introduction to the Shev Shmeitzer, uh, and there he explains this Gemara The Shev Shmeitzer quotes the Zohar that Yira Shemaim, that inner sense of, of awe of Hashem, one's inner frumkeit, one's in, inner seriousness of, of relationship with Hashem, is called Bat, is called the daughter. And the Chochmah of Torah, learning, lomdus, understanding the wisdom of Torah is called Ben. And he says in the name of his father, Pa Milti, he once said something beautiful about this. The reason that Yiro is called a bat, a daughter, Chochmah b'shem Ben, and wisdom is called a Ben, ki Yiro hi davara masu lelev, v'tamun b'kirbo shel adam. Because Yiro Shemaim is something very inner. It, it's an interior part of your being. It's not meant to be on display. It's not, to, not meant to be externalized. It's the way you feel about Hashem. It's your inner state of being. Like the bat, like a girl, like a daughter, whose glory, her, her, her shine, her brilliance, is when she's inward, when she's tsunua, when she's inside the home. But the son is out, he's doing business, he's out, he's conquering the world, he goes out, it's an outward thing. And that's why he explained that the chokma of Torah, wisdom of Torah, which is outward, you talk to people, you've got a chavrusa, you're going to a shir, you're giving a shir, you, you're talking about it. The wisdom of Torah is, is public. But Yerushalayim should be private. And these two areas, we've, we've often talked and often will talk about this relationship between the Rishus HaYochid of a person, a person's inner world, and a person's outer world. The inner world, and we don't spend enough time on the inner world, we're so busy with the outer world, we're out there with people, we're socializing, we're doing business, we're learning with people, we're going to shul, we're at Minyonim, it's all out, outward stuff. What about the inner part of the person? That's the area of Musar and Yerushalayim, working on the development of our of our inner beings, our lives, we stop working on, on the development of our inner beings as soon as we go to school. And we start and we're worrying about grades and we're worrying about how we're seen to be and how we're performing and what colleges we're going to get into or what yeshivas we're going to get into and what shiduchim we're going to find. It's all outer stuff. What about the development of, of the inner world? And this relationship between inner and outer is what he talks about. If your yira comes first, if, if the inner world is strong, if your inner being is strong, your inner understanding, your inner dignity is strong, your inner sense of values is strong, your identity and knowledge of who you are, if all of that is very strong, then that's a siman tov lebonim. Hainu lechokmat Torah. Then the outer Torah has power and has strength. The power of, of what you project is not based on, on the strength of the projection. The power of what you project is based on the purity of, of the inner place from which that outer part comes. And understanding that relationship. We, we tend to think that the way to inc increase our external effectiveness is to focus on the externality. That's how we're trained in school and in university everywhere. We're trained that way. And yes, there is a certain amount of that. You do need to know how to communicate. You need, do need to know how to speak. You de do need to know how to project yourself. All of those are important things. But the real impact of the external is a function of the purity of the, of the internal. And that's the... The, the, the deeper understanding of this comment, bat tchila siman if you start with the inner world, it's a good sign for the outer world. The outer world is going to be far more effective. Yeah, and that applies also in the home and in the relationship between husband and wife and between men and women, that, that she is responsible for the inner soul of the home. So that the home is not just a house, so that the home has a soul. 
she puts the soul into that home. If the soul is there, he can go out into the world and he can do what he needs to do and he can come back and be refreshed and revitalized in his home that has the soul. But the soul needs to be there. And of course, I'm not commenting about the reality of our times. We're both in the world of Torah, in the yeshiva world, and in the secular world. The role of men and women and women going out to work is, is, is very different today. What's important is to understand how it's meant to be. If you can't live the way it's meant to be, then you're deviating from how it's meant to be because of force of circumstance and the need for panos and all sorts of good reasons. Each person has to figure that out for themselves and each family has to figure that out for themselves with, with, with competent uh, guidance from, from Tamid Echechome. But we need to know how it's meant to be. And the way it's meant to be is just as a human being needs an inner world which is which is protected, which is pure, which is uncontaminated by the outside world. And then he can take himself and go into the outside world with an uncontaminated core. So his contamination is only on the outside. He goes and he does. If you are in the outer world, you're getting contaminated. You're seeing things you shouldn't see. You're hearing things you shouldn't hear. You're probably doing things you shouldn't do. When you're out in the world, you're getting contaminated. There's nothing you can do about that. But can one leave that on the outside so that the inner part remains protected, so that there's no contamination of the inner world? And so it is with the home. Yes, he has to go out and he has to work and he has to do things, but at least when he comes home, the home should be pure and al pitora, and that's something the woman takes care of. So that whatever contamination there is through having to deal with the world, it doesn't penetrate the home. The tragedy today is there, no, there, there are no women in the, in the sense, because the women are doing the men's work. The, the women are out in the world becoming contaminated just like the men. And again, I'm not commenting on the right or the wrong. of the, It's just a practicality at the moment. But what's important is to know it's not the way it's meant to be. It's not the ideal. It doesn't work well. It might work well economically, but at an enormous cost, spiritually and socially. And we need to understand that cost. Because the ideal is bat tchila. If the bat, if the inner bat is taken care of, siman yafeh banim, and, and we see that in the same very piece of Gomorrah, because when the Gomorrah says, when it comes to Yerusha, it's nice to have a son first, but when it comes to harvacha, to giving money to the child, you give money to the daughter first, says the Rashbam, she can't go and earn a living like a man can. Why not? Explains Rabbi Nugershon, Mishum de Yatve Bevayat Kidichtiv Kokvo Dobat Melech Pnima. Because it destroys her femininity and it destroys the purity of the home when she does. So you don't want her to have to go out. So if the father has money available, only enough for one of his children or for, or for the boys or, or the girls, he'll give the money to the girls because he would rather they did take care of their inner being and of the inner being of the family so that the sons could, can go out and do whatever business they need to do. It's natural for a man to do business. It's normal for a man to do business. A man grows through his professional or business activity. He becomes more of a man. A woman becomes less of a woman when, when she's involved in that part. As I say, sometimes it has to be. But, but we need to know that's not the ideal. That's, that's not how a woman develops herself. As a woman, she can develop her mind. She can develop masculine qualities that she has. She can develop skills. Women are as good at, at almost anything that men can do as men are. That's not the issue. It's just at what cost. When a man goes out into the world, he becomes more of a man. When a woman goes out, of the, out into the world, she becomes less of a woman. And, and that's the, the, that's the toss-up. The other piece is from the Ben Yohayada. We've got a Hasidish view and, an, and, and a Sephardish view from the Ben Ishchai. And he talks about the Gemara in Soita. This piece is in Soita, where the Gemara says, Arba'im yom kodim yetzirat avlad, 40 days before the child is formed, the fetus is formed, bat kol yotzeit v'omeret, bat ploni leploni, beit ploni leploni, sadeh ploni leploni. Bat kol comes and says, the daughter of so-and-so is destined to marry so-and-so. The house of so-and-so, the property of so-and-so is destined to belong to so-and-so. Asks the Ben Ishchai a very modern question. Why does it say the daughter is destined for that man. Why doesn't it put it the other way around? This man is destined for that girl. In fact, the, the man is probably born already when the, when the girl comes about, uh, about. So really, it should be that way around. This man who's born is, for the, is destined for the daughter of so-and-so. And he explains the way it's worded. And he says, because what it tells us is, not very politically correct, but the, what the Torah is t telling us here, the Gemara is telling us, is that if you want a successful relationship, the woman should not outshine the man. 
If he's got an ego, that ego needs to work. If he's going to go out and conquer the world, he needs ego. If he gets battered at home, you're a useless nobody. I bring in the money. I'm the one who keeps this house going. You're just a shlemiel. That doesn't help him go out into the world and do what he does to do. It doesn't even help him be a man at home. It destroys his masculinity. And so it's important for, for that to be the relationship. And this is not to say a woman must diminish herself. This is to say a man must elevate himself. A man must be worthy. A man must, must take a leadership role. A man must be worthy of a woman saying, I want to be tough to you. I want to look up to you. I want you to lead the home. That's what I want from you because I respect and admire you so much. If a man wants to be admired by his wife, which he has to be, as the Ben Yishai points out here, and we have had many cases of that, if a man wants to be admired by his wife, then he needs to be admirable. That's the avoid of a man. Make sure you're admirable enough so that your wife finds meaning in that, in that role. And therefore he says, what the pshat is, that when the Gemara says, first the woman, she says, bat ploni, le ploni. When, when the Gemara puts the bat tchila, when, the, when in that phrase in the Gemara and Soita, it puts the girl before the boy, that's a siman yafe labanim, that's a sign to the sons, that's a good thing, that's the way to live, perush. Mimad denakat bat kol bitchila, shamra bat ploni, le ploni. And so, and hinei bezea lashon denakat bat kol, yesh siman yafe labanim azacharim, ki mize anu lemeidim, shabanot yutfelim labanim azacharim, velo lehefech. Because it, it's a siman, it shows you how to conduct your life. It shows you how to build the relationship. It's how to, it shows you how to engage between the genders to make sure that as a man, you're worthy of a woman who admires you and that you live the kind of life that is admirable so that she can be tafel. She can want to be led by the man. So the inner world, the, these two pieces are so interesting and complementary. The inner world has to be there first. The inner world has to be the pure world. That's the area of the butt. That's the area of the daughter, the area of the woman in the home. That's the pure part and that needs to be pure so that the outer world can be effective. But, in, but when it comes to, to leadership, it's the, it's the man who's the outer man who takes the lead and the woman wants to, be, wants to follow him because she admires him for the character that he has, for hopefully the Torah that he has, and for the refinement of character that he is.